to stone the adultery woman. Mm. That is in the Bible, to stone the adultery woman. So Allah sent the Quran to the Jewish, to the Israelites, how you come into Prophet Muhammad when you have the law and the Torah. Yes, that's the one. But not general statement as you said. That no, because we don't believe that the Torah, even the Prophet Muhammad, we don't believe everything was in the Torah was perfect, uh, word by word, letter by letter. Okay, let us get you busted. Peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. We are broadcasting in the other account. So please share the link and invite your friends here. Let us see. Let us play this part again and get this Abdul busted. Fast spank for the ones they call them lions, but the fact they are cats. Listen again. To stone the adultery woman that is in the Bible, to stone the adultery woman. So Allah sent the Quran to the Jewish, to the Israelites, how you come into Prophet Muhammad when you have the law and the Torah. Yes, that's the one. But not general statement as you said. That no, because we don't believe that the Torah, even the Prophet Muhammad, we don't believe everything was in the Torah was perfect, uh, word by word, letter by letter. No, no, he never swore by it. <laughs> he never swore by it. <laughs> no, 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 he never swore by it. I don't know about that, but my point to you was. I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You see, first he said I never swore. He never swore by it. <laughs> Everything was in the Torah was perfect, uh, word by word, letter by letter. No, no, he never swore by it. Uh, no, he never. No, no, no. I never, never, he never. Let us get you busted, Abdul. What a big fat liar you are! Like you're the same, you are a prophet, the son as his father. But at least maybe you know who's your father, Muhammad. You do not know. He was born four years after his father's death. Here we see in the front of us this guy. He said he never swore by it. And this is how we got the Abdul busted. A Jewish group came to Muhammad and invited the Messenger of Allah. Uh, no, like they have, like, uh, let us say, uh, a religious school. They said Abu Qasim, which means Muhammad. This is what they call him, Abu Qasim. One of our men has committed fornication with a woman. So pronounce judgment upon them. They placed a question for him of Allah, uh, uh, for uh, for message of Allah, who sat on it. And then he said, bring the Torah. And it was then brought. He then withdrew the question. And from beneath him, and he placed the Torah saying, I believe in thee and him who revealed thee the coward the liar the scam he said that the Torah when Allah he says why you come to Muhammad if you have the Torah he said this is a general statement they don't believe in the old Torah but here we go and he said again when the guy he said to him but Muhammad he swore by it he said no 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 he did not swear by it Muhammad he swore by it and you are a big fat liar and when the guy he insists, he said, I do not know about that. Now, here we have a question. As long you are debating the Christians to prove to them that the Torah is corrupt. That's mean your prophet must be a corrupt man because only a corrupt man will swear by a corrupt book. So thank you for fighting for that purpose. A good man, he will never swear in a book he don't believe in unless he is a scam. And that is the situation of your prophet. He have no dignity and he is willing to swear in a book which he don't believe in, as you just said, because you just confirm and you are debating the Christians, saying to them, it is corrupt book. The Quran did not confirm the Torah to be true. This is general statement, not everything. So when your prophet, he put his hand over the Torah, saying, I believe in thee. And look, Muhammad here, the hypocrite, He's treating the Torah with a lot of respect. He put the Torah in the top of the cushion, not in the ground. He took the cushion from underneath of him. And then he said, I swear by thee and the one who sent thee. Do you see how they lie? Secondly, as long as Muhammad he is saying to them, well, you have a stoning to death verse in the Torah. Why we cannot find the stoning to death verse in the Quran? The answer we will find it in the following hadith from your mother, the mother of the believer, the one who was accused of being a prostitute in the in the in the story of uh, what is called al-ethic, which means supposedly <laughs> it was a fabrication. She said, "Yeah." 
Let us see what happened to the stoning to death verse, which Muhammad, he copied from the Torah. The verse of stoning and the breastfeeding for adult 10, 10 times was revealed. So we have verses, those are verses, not hadith. Verses of stoning and verses about the breastfeeding for adults. For those who do not know, the Muslims believe that the Prophet, he said, that the Muslim women, in order to be able to meet with men who they are strangers, she have to give her boobs, and the man who is a stranger have to suck it ten different times until he is satisfied. And as you see here, it says for adult. This is not for babies. And then Ayesha continues saying, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tam sheep came and ate it. This is what happened to the Quran, who the Muslims have big mouth keep saying that your book is corrupt and our book is preserved, when their God could not even stop a, 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 a silly goat from eating the Quran. And now we cannot find those following verses, at least. Actually, there's many references we can show endless of them that Aisha herself, she said, that the chapter of Al Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of Al Baqarah, which means there's more than 213 verses are missing only in one chapter. And the Muslims, they accuse the goat for such a thing. And by the way, when Muhammad he swore on the Torah, this guy, this Abdul, those liars, they might say to you, Oh, this is a weak hadith. Guess what? This is not. And they cannot say that. So they keep lying to us because they are desperate. Now, let us continue in the video and laugh more because we are not done. Even the video is meant to be short. I don't know about that, but my point is you went off the topic. You went off the topic. So is it is it from justice to kill a babies for something their forefathers did? That's my question. Is it justice to kill a baby for something their forefather did? This is how stupid the Muslims are. Aren't you Muslims believe in the flood of Noah? <laughs> what is the flood of Noah? There's only adult die? I mean, hypocrites, stupid donkeys, you name it. Now, let us show you Muhammad killing babies for something their forefather did. Let us go. I was among the captives of Bani Quraida. They, the companion, examine us, and those who had begun to grow their a, 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 a hair and around your private part were killed, which means they are babies. Because having little hair around your little private part when you are a boy, that will not make an adult. This is your prophet and this is your religion. So how old they are, nine years old, we are Middle Eastern. We start having hair in a very early age. What are they, seven years old, eight years old? Liars, liars, and not only that, if you go to the Quran, chapter 18, verse number 74, here we find a Muslim child who never commit anything, he never did any wrong. He met by a prophet Al Khadr, and Allah he sent Prophet Musa to learn from the new master, the, the guru Al Khadr, the prophet of Allah, who Allah gave him a lot of knowledge. Al Khadr he met with the boy. And this boy, he suspects that he will not be good. So look what he did to him. So they sat after leaving the ship, making their way on foot until they met a boy who had not yet reached the property, playing with other boys, among them who his face was fairest. And he, Al Khudr, slew him by slitting his throat with a knife while he lay down, or by tearing his head off with his hands, or by smashing his head against the wall. All which are different opinion. Muslims are confused which one he killed with. You pick up one. So why he was killed? He did not do anything. So Moses as he said, why you killed a, a, an innocent soul? Why you killed? Why you killed him? Later Al Khadr he explained to him 
He said, I did because later this guy, he, he, you know, I suspect that later he might do something bad to his parents. He will, he will leave Islam. <laughs> you want to kill the, you want to kill the boy because he will, he might leave Islam. What about you wait until he leave Islam? He is a boy. And he is saying to him, you know, this is what, this is the problem. You cannot. You cannot, you know, you cannot have a, have patient with me. I am I am very patient because Allah he gave me patient. You don't have patient, Musa. So this man, he is teaching Musa, is giving him a lesson, as you see in all those verses, how to be a prophet, and how to be a prophet. If you see a boy and you suspect that one day when he grow up he might be not nice and he will leave his religion, then what we should do? We should kill him and as for the boy his parents were believers and we feared we feared you feared that when he grow up he will be not good as a believer and you kill him and you are telling us about killing babies let us continue and get you more busted coward like your prophet let us see <laughs> I'm sure they will be upset from this video. Yes. So you, no, no, no. So God will tell you to do something unjust. Sorry. God will tell you to do something unjust. No, listen. You don't understand. I do. You know, look who is talking about to do something unjust. Is killing the Christian and the Jews just because they don't believe is just? Is beating your wife is just? Is killing someone just because you are jealous from him as Muhammad he did he kill a believer because of jealousy is just is attacking the Roman saying to your followers attack the Roman and get the blonde girls is a just actually even Muhammad he was even not just with his wives the wife of Muhammad He complained from Muhammad being unjust. Let us show you the verse. Actually, hold on, hold on. Before, before I show you this one, <laughs> let me show you this one first. A Muslim man. Who discovered that Muhammad is a thief and he is giving his friends more than others from the booty all of them They are thieves the thieves now they are fighting over the booty look at this Jabir ibn Abdullah reported that the person came to Muhammad the messenger of Allah said to him After he noticed that he gave extra uh, 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 Silver to Bilal now remember Bilal is not going to take the silver to his pocket. This is the money to go to Muhammad. Bilal is the is the money back of Muhammad. Bilal himself is a slave. He don't earn money. He don't make money. Slaves don't earn money in Islam. So Bilal, uh, Muhammad, he gave the silver to Bilal, which is mean to him. So the man he said to Muhammad, Muhammad, do justice. Muhammad, do justice. This is a companion of Muhammad saying to Muhammad, do justice. And this is Sahih Muslim, by the way. This is a Sahih Hadith. And then Muhammad said, O we be upon thee. Would you do justice if I do not do justice? Well, obviously, you are not. And you would be very unfortunate and a loser if I do not do justice. Then look what Umar Khattab he said. He said, Umar he said, Prophet, let me kill him. Let me kill this hypocrite. <laughs> the guy he's just asked for justice right away you want to kill him and look what Muhammad excuse not to kill him he said uh, I don't mind you to kill him but hmm, people people would say I kill my companions you see he don't mind to kill him just because the guy he said to him do justice for he is stealing extra money and remember the Muslims accused their prophet that he stole even clothing 
if we go in the Quran, we will find the following. Muhammad was accused even by his followers that he is a thief and he steal underwear. وَمَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍ أَنْ يُغُلْ Chapter 3, verse number 161. It's not for a prophet to be a fraud. What they accuse him with? They accuse him of stealing a piece of a clothing. What kind of a prophet and what kind of companion? They are fighting over stolen clothes. Even those clothes are stolen. They are a bunch of thieves fighting over clothing. Accusing their prophet that he stole clothing. This is a prophet of God. If this is a prophet of God, if God, who is the gang? Who is who is the uh, uh, who who is the 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 the, uh, uh, the thieves? <clears throat> Let me show you. One sixty one. You see, they are fighting over dividing the booty, and some clothing were missing. Some clothing were missing. Muhammad is willing to kill one of his companion over an underwear. And look what happened. After they accuse him, the companion, that he is a thief, he stole a bikini. And the proof that he is the one who stole it. And by the way, this is a stolen bikini from the infidels. They attack the infidels who they are real believers. And Muhammad is the pagan man who kissed a black stone. They killed them. They stole their clothes. They stole their shoes. And now they are fighting over their shoes and their clothes. And now Muhammad accused that one of the underwear is missing. And Allah, he made a verse saying that it's not Muhammad who took the underwear. But guess what? Allah never said who took it. Which means obviously the one who took it is Muhammad because if Allah is God and Muhammad is a prophet and Allah he involved in this story and he said it's not Muhammad who did take the underwear shouldn't Allah says who is the one who took it but Allah he keep his mouth silence because this is Muhammad himself for Muhammad is not a prophet and even if someone else his story to do not know who took it otherwise if God really is talking he should say okay go to this house of this man and you will find it there so there is one of two choices either Muhammad he took it or Muhammad, he fabricated this verse because there's no way God, he will say that it's not Muhammad who took the underwear, but yet he will not tell us who took it. Until now, by the way, the underwear is missing. Now we continue getting them busted. Justice, huh? The Muslim talking about justice. Continue. Please, guys, don't forget after we finish this video to download the video and share it around with your friends. Things in history, right? These are for our learning, right? That's why you have the new covenant. And they are uh, 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 not instructed. You have so no, to no one. You can't speak for the hundred percent. I beg them, never. Love you. Eh? I'm no, no, you're not. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. I am. You're not. You're not. I'm not instructed. Don't let me show you the Bible. And the Bible teach you I, no. that if I don't believe, same belief as you, you should not greet me and you should not invite me to your house. Show me the verse. Here. Show me the verse. That's what I like. Here. Show me the verse. 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 Show me the and in context, uh, uh, read the whole Bible. Do you understand context? Uh, very well. Because I know it's a bit alien to you guys. Ah, thank you very much, alien. Look who's speaking. Let us see. Hold this, Zachi. So you read the context for us, please. Not Shamsi, because person might say Shamsi is taking out of context, as always people try to say. Okay, here we go, John. Is John? John what? One. The first letter of John. John 1, what? You got John 1 from 22? 22. Yeah. No, you are. Then, then said, then no, no, sorry, 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 sorry. John, uh, 2, 2, 2. Second. 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 By the way, they don't know anything about the Bible. Those people, they, ha they, they read from the that and they put a sticker in the Bible. They have a stickers in the Bible about everything claimed they want to do. They do not know anything about the Bible. They have a stickers where people, they accuse the Bible of something, and then they put a sticker there. So when they go to the speaking corner, they click at the sticker. Okay, the sticker says this is the issue. It's written there, and then we open. Second, second, yeah. Okay. 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 okay, whoever, whoever transgresses and doesn't know, abide in the doctrine of Christ and doesn't know, have God. So listen to the right. guideline, right. yeah? Who abides in the doctrine of Christ yeah. has both the Father and the Son. Yeah. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, mm -hmm. do not receive him into your house, nor greet him. 
You are going against your Bible when you greet me. So now that will make us bad. Look, look how stupid they are. The verse saying that a person coming to your home. Why a person he is coming to our home? Those are like Jehovah's Witnesses who are trying to preach false gospel. And I am afraid not to welcome you in my home if you are teaching false teaching. This is what the verse is saying. There's nothing wrong in that. You are not welcome in my home. Now let us see if this is will make us bad for not welcoming someone who insult Jesus in our home, who teach false teaching in our home, who try to mislead our family in our home. This is our home. Let us see what your prophet said about what to do when you see a Christian or a Jew in the street, not in your home. Not only you are not allowed to welcome them in your home, in Islam a Muslim is not allowed even to take them as a friend, is not allowed to friend them, is not allowed to take them as a protectors, and not allowed to respect them, and not allowed to let them walk in the street without harming them. Read carefully with me here the verse before. If there is anyone come to you, into you, bring his doctrine, okay? So he's coming to your house. Receive him not into your house. This is in our house. It's not we are going out in the street harming people and insulting them or harming them. Same time, if we go to Muhammad, we will say the following. Do not greet the Jews and the Christians before they greet you. You see, we are the one better than you, so Christians, they greet you. And then when you meet any one of them, force them to the narrowest row, or, 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 or way of the road, which means the sewage. In the old day, there's a road and there's a sewage. The sewage is an open tunnel for the dirty water, not like today is hiding under the street. So when a Muslim come in and a Christian come in or a Jewish come in, the Jewish, he have to greet you first because he have to show respect to you. Secondly, he cannot walk with you in the street. He have to go down in the sewage, him and his family. So if not a greeting you, coming to our house will make us bad. How about your prophet forbidding you to greet us even in the street? And the top of that, you have a duty to harm us and to force us to walk in the sewage. Not only that. This is if we live between Muslims and we are paying the jizya, which means you are already humiliated. In case you are not paying the jizya, you are going to be executed immediately. If we go to Ibn Kathir, we will find the following. This is a chapter 9, verse number 29. It says, you can read with me carefully, please. Fight against those who believe not in Allah nor the last days nor forbid what is forbidden by allah and his messenger and those acknowledge not the religion of islam the truth which means islam from the people of the scriptures so what is the point what is the reason to kill us just because we don't believe in your religion so you are upset from the christian not to greet you if you come to their house and not to welcome you just because you don't believe in the religion but you are willing and you have the duty to kill us just because you don't believe in your religion and supposedly not a greeting you will make us bad but you killing us will make you good and you forcing us to walk in this sewage will make make you good, and we are not greeting you in our house will make us ugly. Read, read carefully. Until they pay the jizya, and here we see a clear sign that Muhammad is a gang man. As we see, he was fighting with his companion over an underwear, over a piece of silvers, because he's a thief. And now Muhammad, if he is a prophet of God, why he will accept that I will stay Christian if I pay him money? Think about it. If Muhammad really is fighting for God, and he is killing people because they don't believe in God. And those are kuffar. And those, they will go to hell. And everybody who don't believe Allah, he want to kill him. He want to fight him. But the second you agree to pay him money, he let you live. For he is a scumbag and he is a gang. He's not doing it for God. Who is the one get the benefit from the jizya? Allah. When I pay Muhammad jizya, Allah will get the benefit or Muhammad so you can stay as a Christian it's okay don't worship Allah it's okay worship Jesus it's okay as long as you pay me if you don't pay me I kill you so if you don't pay me suddenly I remember that you are a Christian you deserve to be killed 
as long you are paying me it's okay worship Jesus don't believe in Muhammad don't believe in Allah don't pray in the direction of the Kaaba suddenly Muhammad he forget all the rules forget it don't don't worry don't you don't have to be a Muslim just pay me and that is a clear evidence that Islam is false and Muhammad is nothing but a but a scam The Muslims are not even allowed to respect us until they pay the jizya if they do not choose embrace Islam. So why we pay the jizya? Because we don't refuse. We refuse. The Muslim they will say this is a tax. This is a false because look what it says, and they feel themselves subdued. Not so you know you, you don't pay tax just like any citizen. No, this is jizya. It's penalty, as you pay it with disgrace, humiliated. Do you see it? Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhamma or elevate them above the Muslims. The coward, the potato, he's saying, how your book says, don't agree the one who come to your house if he's teaching different teaching, if he have different gospel, if he have, if you don't abide, abide by Christ. But he have no problem to humiliate us, to disgrace us, to for us to pay money and to take our land. Remember, they come to your land and then they force you to pay money in your house, in your land. And supposedly we are the bad and they are the good. And look at the, your faith in Muhammad. He's saying, don't initiate the salam to the Jews and the Christians. And if you meet any of them in the road, force them to the most narrow alley. And here he continue describing how you need to humiliate the Christians. And this is why Umar al-Khattab, he demand his well known the condition to be met by the Christians. And what is the condition? Is the pact of Umar, where Umar, he humiliated the Christians. You have to shave the front of your head. If you go in the top of a donkey, you have to turn your face to the, to the, to the ass of the donkey. If you want to go in the bathroom, you have to carry in the top, in, in like, like, like a weight of etc. Amazingly disgusting stuff. You have to open your doors in our houses to worship. You will not prevent any Muslim to rest in your church, whether they come in the day or the night. And we are willing to open our doors of our houses for, for worship of, of any Muslim. Muslims, they can come to your house and they can enjoy sitting in your house for three days, three nights for free. Any Muslim can knock at your door and he lay in your bed and he sleep for three days, for three nights for free. And you will not teach your children the Quran. And you will not wear clothes like the Muslims. And you will not ring the bill of the church. Read it. This is how filthy this cult is. My friend, download the video and share it around. And let us get them busted. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. This is just a short video to get the Abdul busted and to show them how filthy this cult is. And by the way, there is a reward by the Saudi government for those who they can find the goat who ate the Quran. Because until now, we cannot find the Quran which is eaten by the goat. If anyway, anyhow, you met such a goat, let me describe this goat for you. If you see the goat, First of all, you will notice that in her stomach, it says Allahu Akbar because she ate Quran. Secondly, she walked like a terrorist because she ate Quran. Number three, she liked to do breastfeeding because she ate the breastfeeding verses. As you see, for adult, she liked to give her boobs to adult men. Number four, this, this goat, obviously, she liked to play with the stones because she ate the verses of stoning. So if you met any of those goats, please call the Saudi Arabia embassy or any office of authority of Saudi Arabia. There's a big reward for the one who find the goat who ate the Quran of Allah and Allah could not stop it. And until now, we cannot find neither the verses for stoning, neither for the verses for adult 10 time feeding. And by the way, when Muhammad, he said that a woman, she can give her breast to a man to do 10 time breastfeeding. 
he proved to us again that he is a perverted minded person and he don't respect Muslims who in the world will accept that his wife she will give her breast to stranger just because a stupid fool man his name is Muhammad says you should do so I challenge Shamsi and all the Muslims to let their wives practice Islam because this is Islam when the women she came to Muhammad and she said to him I have my my husband is worrying because we have an adult man in my house and he he hate the look of it this man is looking at her in a sexual way so Muhammad he said give him your boobs feed him he said how oh, I'm going to feed him and he's a growing man how I'm going to feed him breastfeeding him suckling him how I'm going to do so and he is a growing man Muhammad he said I know he's a growing man and he was laughing obviously he's making fun of the Muslims this is Islam my friend and this is why I believe the Muslims they destroy they, they accuse the goat that the goat ate the verse but I, I, I guarantee you that the Muslims is the one who destroy it because this is disgusting and this is stupid and even if the goat ate the verse don't the Muslim they say to us we recite the Quran by heart okay the goat ate the verse where is the verse you keep saying to us that we Muslim will recite the Quran by heart the goat she ate the verse the paper she did not eat the Muslims so if she eat the paper and you Muslims you recite the Quran by heart that's mean you should be able to recite the verse by heart why it's not in the Quran unless the goat she did eat the paper and she ate the Muslims too then that makes sense thank you very much for watching and may the Lord bless you until we see you in coming video download share and don't forget to subscribe my friend this is a Christian Prince was with you and see you soon again. Take care and God bless.